Look at the worst years ever for the US stock market measured by the S&P 500. Guys, you are going to be okay. I don't typically do videos on Fridays, especially before long weekends because most people are checked out, but there is some information that came out that I do want to discuss with you that will have implications for the rest of 2022, major implications. Some of your favorite stocks, and I'm talking about blue chip quality stocks, not talking about high beta, high growth stocks actual companies that you want to own for a lifetime. Some of those were down 30, 40, 50%. The real question is how much more downside do these stocks actually have? If Tesla was down 50%, is it going to drop another 50%? Nvidia was down 55%, is it gonna drop another 55%? Same thing for the SPY and the NASDAQ ETF. Remaining in this context, we have to talk about what is going on with inflation, what is going on with GDP and what is going on with CPI? How much longer do we hold out before starting to nibble in one's favorite companies? Well, at the end of the day, this is up to you. But if you are not informing your decision based on what is going on in the macroeconomic landscape and you're just waiting for a bottom, you probably will not catch the bottom. The real question you should be asking yourself is, is Tesla too cheap to pass up here based on my study of its fundamentals. Is Apple too cheap to pass up here based on its fundamentals? Same thing with the index ETFs, same thing with Microsoft, same thing with Walmart. So let's dive into some of the positive news here as it relates to inflation. Because remember, at the end of the day, there are only two things that are holding the stock market back right now, or the economy for that matter. Number one, price instability. And number two, at least for the stock market, earnings. If the inflation problem is solved, that will inform the Fed's monetary decisions. The Fed's monetary decisions will then weigh heavy on corporate decisions, and then companies will be better positioned to actually report decent earnings once again and provide accurate positive guidance. If we look at the PCE gauge, and this is not the same thing as the CPI, we'll talk about slight differences in a second, but it looks like inflation is actually slowing. And we talked about the UBS numbers showing that inflation was peaking. Not, it doesn't mean that it's good, but inflation is peaking. And now we are seeing the first set of numbers that show that inflation is slowing. I want to point out an important caveat that just because inflation is slowing, it does not mean that we know when prices will actually start dropping back to normalized levels. The rate of core PCE inflation in the past year tapered off to 4.9% from 5.2%. The monthly decline was the second in a row. The last time this happened back to back occurred early in the pandemic. Now the PCE differs a bit from the CPI because the PCE is just meant to report on personal cons consumption expenditures as opposed to a larger or broader consumer price index. Now, this was enough to stave off the longest weekly losing streak in the Dow since 1932. Yes, this even trumps the 2008 financial crisis. This trumps the 2020 COVID pandemic and certainly trumps the dot-com bust of the year 2000, which is crazy. I didn't even know this. Now, I want you guys to remember something. The stock market is forward-looking, right? That means that the stock market actually is pricing in what investors think is going to happen in the future. So my point is that inflation doesn't need to consistently come in at the target 2% rate in order for stocks to do well again. The market just needs to think that that's going to happen at some point in the future before stocks start to rally. And the fact that there is a ton of quality that is cheap right now is why I started selling cash secured puts on my favorite names. Cash secured puts is a way to get into stocks that you wanna own at a cheaper price. You don't have to do this through options. You can buy shares or dollar cost average into shares. But I sold cash secure puts on Apple, Microsoft, Triple Qs, Tesla. You could see how much we're up on those 30%, 50%, 50%, 31%. These are on quality names. Obviously, I sent all this stuff out in the Discord. We are closing subscriptions, as a matter of fact, because we're moving to a new model next month. And we want to keep this a tight-knit exclusive group. If you want access to all of our long-term trades, short-term options, futures, crypto, etc., link is in the description below. Come be a part of a great community. We chat and talk about trades, markets macroeconomics, short-term options, technical analysis all day, every day. So come be a part of the group. Would love to have you. Now, a couple of more things you need to watch like a hawk. Number one is the gross domestic product. Remember, last quarter, we reported a negative GDP print, the first since the recession of 2020. Remember, two negative GDP prints means that we will officially be in a recession. I want you to mark this on your calendar. I want you to open up your calendar, type in June 29, 2022, 
GDP reading, right? This is going to be the second quarter of 2022. And, and if this comes out negative, then there's a chance that the bear market rally or whatever bear market rally we're in up, up to that point will then start to crash once again. The next is the consumer price index. This is going to be earlier on June 10th, 2022. We will see the CPI numbers. Now, even though the Fed favors the PCE, the one, the number that we just went over, the CPI is what the markets, the media, and investors, more importantly, investors, pay attention to. So if the CPI print matches the PCE print and comes in significantly lower for the first time since the pandemic, then I think we will continue this bear market rally. Now we are starting to see insiders buying up stocks once again. One thing is important to note is we don't know if they are buying because of an expected bear market rally or if they are if they are buying because they think this is the long-term spot to start pouring in. Now that may be a moot point because like I said, if your favorite stock is down 50%, how much more downside do you think is left? Is there a chance that the stock has actually more upside than downside, especially if it's a blue chip that's down heavily? The ratio of companies with insiders buying to those selling has doubled to 0.95. The average since 2016 was 0.47. The last time we had anything this close was March 2020, the bottom of the pandemic recession. Now, regardless of whether institutions are doing this short term or long term, there is no question that there is some great value here. Historically, anytime I told you that the Nasdaq was down 31%, you would want to go ahead and buy it. Anytime I told you the S&P was down 20%, you'd want to buy it. Anytime I told you that Amazon was over 40% off or Tesla was 50% off, those are times that you'd want to buy those quality stocks. You don't believe me? Let's check out the metrics. This is by one of my favorite macroeconomic sites called A Wealth of Common Sense. If you guys know who Ben Carson, Ben Carson, Ben Carlson is, he runs the site. But even if you include your worst doom and gloom scenario, and this is including the Great Depression, the Great Financial Crisis, the dot-com crash, look at the worst years ever for the US stock market measured by the S&P 500. What happened the next year, what happened after three years, and what happened after five years? Guys, you are going to be okay. Screenshot this if you have to, but only one time after three years did the market not end up heavily green and was actually negative after three years, and that was the Great Depression in 1930. And even then, after five years, it was fine. So unless you're going to retire in the next year or two in which you do have some pretty heavy decisions to weigh and you should talk to your financial advisor, in my view, this is the time to start thinking about rotating from shit to fit. Unfortunately, I don't agree with a lot of my YouTube colleagues who say this is the time to buy high beta stocks once again. In my view, we did suffer a dot-com-like crash in some of those names. Is Zoom going to see $600 again? Is QuantumScape going to be 132 again? Is MicroStrategy going to be 1300 again? Is DraftKings going to be 74? Is Rivian going to be 181? I personally don't think so. Even though one or two of those names could return to the days of yore, I think it's over for most of those high beta names. And I do think that you really have to start learning, especially if you're new to the market, how to evaluate companies, how to look at a balance sheet and cash flows, how to look at income statements, how to look at earnings and guidance. Don't just buy names that some random YouTuber told you, even if it's me. Anyway, traders, that is it for this video. I hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, consider sharing it, leaving a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're buying. I love to hear from you. I try to respond to each and every comment. Yes, even the funny negative ones. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.